Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man who is coming off a second round stoppage victory. There, 16 seconds into the second round, Michael. Congratulations on the victory. It's been, uh, we, we talked about, about at the beginning of the year prior to that fight at Fury 57. Well, I was going back and watching your fight uh, last Sunday. The thing that, that stuck out to me was the end of the first round. You clip him good up against the fence, and, and he was hurt. When you go back to the corner, because, I mean, it, it's one of those situations of maybe there's 10, 15 more seconds after the round, the fight doesn't get to the second round. Is that one yeah. of those situations where you go back to the corner and you're like, all right, I got this guy. I need to go ball to the wall right here at the start and, and see how much he's recovered? Yeah. I mean, right at the end of that round, I hit him with a couple of shots. I hit him with a body shot that he didn't really like. And then I, on the fence, I hit him too. And I hit him kind of like grunt. He was like, mm, or oh. You know, and I was like, oh, that, uh-uh, don't do that. that. That gets me going, you know. I'm like, oh, that one hurt him. And so kind of that end of the first round, that was kind of our game plan really was to put him on the fence and then work him into clinch and work punches off, you know, off the fence. That was the game plan because I knew that watching his film that he didn't really like being pressured. So I was doing a good job of pressuring him throughout the fight, but I needed to pressure him a little more and keep him on the fence where he wasn't able to use his length and his distance. So as soon as I get back to, to the corner, um, Leo Mana, he was he was my uh, my, my corner. He was like, just like that. He's like, you broke him. He's like, just like we said, do the same thing. He's like, that's what I want to see. Second round, same thing, for, like pressure him. And like for me, honestly, like I didn't really watch, like I mean, going back and watching it, the fight, like, in my head, I thought the first round was kind of close because he was hitting me a little bit, mm-hmm. which I knew was going to be a thing. I But I knew that I could take his shots, but I, I didn't think he could take my shots. So every time he would hit me, I would just keep walking forward, you know. Every time I hit him, you could kind of see him, like, walking back a little bit. But still, like, we traded some good shots in the first. So, um, so I, yeah, so I knew that – I knew that he couldn't really hurt me, but – yeah, that was kind of the whole game plan was just to kind of pressure him and put him on the fence like that. Yeah, when when I was watching the fight, it was kind of one of my, my thoughts was, I was like, man, I, I wonder how much of the game plan was about keeping Cameron on, on his back foot kind of hustling around. Um, you know, the end of, at, it, you know at the end of the first round, I, I forget what the shot was you hit him, but you could see it in his face. I was like, ooh. That's, I mean, I knew how the fight ended, so I was like, okay, this is kind of the sequence of it. But then the other thing, there was a moment – when you go back, you watch the fight. Uh, the action's going right to left. He he lands a right hand, and you kind of wipe it off. And it always it always had that look of like, damn it, man! <laughs> like, like it was almost like it's like it's like damn it, I should have. It, 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 it had that look from as a viewer of like, like your mindset was like, damn it, I should have blocked that shot. Yeah, I mean, well, he I know which one he's talking about. That was like the only one that kind of like I felt kind of by he hit me, and I was like. Oh, yeah, like, in my head, that was the one where it's like I just took his best shot and it was, it was nothing, you know? And I think from that moment, kind of flipped everything because I know he, too, that's kind of frustrating. You hit somebody with your best shot and then they just keep walking forward. They kind of just <laughs> smile at you. And I know that it's, it's hard, you know, as, as a person, you just hit somebody you're like, oh, that was a good one. And they just kept walking forward. And and then me mentally, I knew that was my whole game plan. I knew that there wasn't anything really that I thought he was going to put me away with. Maybe his left kick. Because, you know, he finished a bunch of guys with that left kick. So I said, maybe he can put me away with that left kick. Because, you know, if you get in the body, it's body shots is hard to take sometimes, you know. Um, but when he hit me with that left hand, I said, "There's I don't think he's putting me to sleep with that left, that left hand, you know. So it gave me more confidence to keep moving forward and put like put more pressure on him and so i was like okay i'm okay to eat one if i'm gonna give one back you know and the ones i gave back outpowered you know the ones that he gave me you know i did notice on topology that you had a previous opponent for this fight card so what was the uh the time range in terms of when you got when you had the original opponent to then getting cameron okay so about i think right almost close to a month out before i got the grace fight um you know, I was talking to my coach, and we're kind of going over, you know, what we're going to do for the next opponent. And then we kind of realized that he trains out of Factory X. And at the time, Coach Montoya is the coach over there. And at the time, you know, Kraus was uh, coaching me. So they just agreed not to coach against each other. 
I guess just like one of their rules or, you know, like you don't, tr you don't fight your teammate, you know, kind of like they don't coach, uh, what's it called? They don't coach against each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, you know, that's cool, whatever. And it was about a month out. I was like, that's plenty of time, you know. So uh, the promoter started throwing out names to me. And I guess, like, not that he was, like, picking me fights, but, you know, he was – I guess they were saying, like, maybe I wasn't ready for, like, this fight because, you know, he had, like – he was 10 and 6, a lot of experience. I told the promoter, I said, I'm going to fight him eventually. I'm ready now, mm -hmm. you know. And he was supposed to face the guy I fought, the one I was matched up with originally. They were supposed to fight, yeah. uh, I think, a month prior. And, my like, that opponent missed weight. And I think that's why I ended up was going to fight him in December. So he was available. And I was like, it just makes sense. And I'm ready. And I think that's a big name on the resume, you know, to beat him. He was a former Fury champ, too. And um, I thought I was ready for the level of competition, especially all the people I trained with. And I just felt that I was ready that. You know, it's it's time. You, you had a, an Instagram post 12 days before this matchup uh, where you said uh, part of it was feeling mentally, physically, and spiritually ready for war. How do you put yourself in that mind frame? Um, you know, it, it kind of took me a while for me just to be, you know, mentally, you know, kind of grow up and just mentally – be ready because you know when I started fighting I was 17 years old and I, you know I was so young you know I wasn't really taking it like you know everything serious you know as far as like the eating you know I was still training and working out a lot you know but like even my sleep I wasn't sleeping right so I'm in high school you know I, I'll go to sleep at two three in the morning you know I eat whatever because you know I can I got you know my metabolism's kicking and so I think just over the years just being able to find you know, that point where it's like, I feel that like I've grown, you know, mentally, physically, I've been, I'm still growing. I'm only 22 and just spiritually, just like being able to connect, you know, me and my relationship with, you know, God or my family, all those things that I feel like when you put everything together and it's good, then you get, you know, the finished product. But if you have, you know, if you're physically not there, but you're mentally there, You'll be okay, but just being able to put it all together and say, I feel that mentally I'm strong, physically I'm strong, spiritually I'm strong, and it, it just makes for a performance, you know, like Saturday when it really just all comes together. And in 2022, you go 3-0. and As you think about this year as a martial artist, how would you describe it? Uh, oh, man, it, it's, it's just a blessing. It, it's really a blessing, and... Um, I wanted to fight more, honestly. The six months off was kind of like my longest layoff, which was good, though, because I needed time to, you know, figure out my life. You know, I, I was still going to school. You know, I still had college. I literally took a final, like, four days before the <laughs> my fight, <laughs> you know. So I was just making sure that everything was in order. I was making sure that, you know, getting ready for this fight, that I'm training, you know, two, three times a day, every day. Mm -hmm. Just making sure my schedule and my time – Looking back, this has been one of the best years, but I just think there's more to grow. There's more to become better, bigger fights to happen now. You know, I think um, the way I did this year just sets me up for a bigger next year. You know? What are you trying to get your degree in? Uh, sports administration, and then I'm minoring in uh, business administration. So, uh, so how, how are we balancing, you know, the, the school life of, of, you know, getting those degrees, but also putting in that daily grind in the gym? It's hard. <laughs> it's not easy, you know, and, um, you know, everyone has their own story. Everyone, you know, some people work and they have to work all day and then they got to go train, you know. Um, I'm blessed to be able to be in school. I know most people wish, you know, that they have a degree, you know. I just know that, you know, my life right now is fighting, but maybe in 20 years my life's not going to be fighting and I got to have a backup plan. I got to have something else to be able to fall on. So getting this education is super important for me, for other adventures or other ventures I want, you know, after fighting, mm -hmm. uh, balancing it, I'm doing as best I can. You know, <laughs> I try to make my schedule around my workout schedule. If I can, I talk to my teachers. I let them know. Cause this camp I was in, uh, Kansas city and I had a couple in-person classes, you know, and I just kind of talked to my teachers like, Hey, I'm training for my fight coming up. I'm not going to be in class, you know, for a month or two, you know, if, if there's anything I can do, and they, they legit, they told me, they said, 
uh, I, okay, you can be dismissed from not being in class, but you still have to take the classes in person. So I would be training, and if I had a test on Tuesday, I fly home from Kansas City Monday night, take the test Tuesday, fly back to Kansas City, go train, and then in my other class, if I had a test, I'd fly back for the tests and quizzes, and then get back to Kansas City and then get training. So I mean, I had to do what I had to do. It's a lot though, like it's a lot for sure. Everyone knows what's going on in in. in Kansas City, Lee Summit, Missouri. Everyone knows. Yeah. I don't. Ha- I don't have to go into that. But um, how, sure. how has that? How will that affect your training life in twenty twenty three? Um, I'm not sure. I think um, I didn't really discuss it much before this fight. I just wanted to, you know, win this fight mm-hmm. and sit down with you know my my dad. He's a real, he's a big factor in everything I do. He's kind of like my little co manager. Not really. You know, I'm with Iridium, but. You know, he's like my dad, my dadager, you know. Um, and I need to really just sit down and kind of just talk and see where it goes. You know, I mean, I have no idea, really, to be honest with you. I haven't thought, I haven't, I've thought about it, but I haven't mm-hmm, no. really sat down and figured out exactly. You know, I kind of wanted to just win this fight. All my focus was solely on this fight. And then I was going to, you know, relax a little bit get ready for the holidays, get some cookies and milk for <laughs> Christmas, and then, uh, uh, you know, have a plan going into the 1st of January mm-hmm. and then get back to work, you know. I'm re- I mean, I'm honestly, I'm ready to get back to work now, but um, it's nice to take a little time off too, a little bit. Like As you think about 2023 and, and the potential opportunities that are going to be there for you, I mean, for sure. is is Fury title maybe kind of one of those opportunities that, that's, I mean, because you know, all your fights have been in Fury. Is that yeah. part of your mindset of like, it, like I, I understand that, okay, it's about getting to the big show, you know, you know, for UFC, sure. Bellator, PFL, whatever it may be. But it, is part of you like, man, like my legacy is cemented in Fury that yeah I, I gotta i gotta finish this with the fury title before taking that next step or is this situation of like hey would love to get that fury title shot but if an opportunity comes hey, i'm taking that opportunity i mean i don't know if you heard my my post my post uh fight interview or whatever i was literally just yelling at eric to give me the belt i was like give me the belt eric i just beat a former fury champ the, you know, the guy who has the belt, he fought him, you know, and it was a split decision. You know, and for me, in my head, it only makes sense I should get the belt. But I get it. If you don't want to give it to me, I, I said, if you're not going to give me a belt, at least give me the main event. Like, make me the main event on every car. I sell out the whole arena. <laughs> already okay all right that's that's one of the things i noticed about the fight you're fighting a guy from houston he gets yeah. booed out of the building <laughs> and, they, and then like the, the funniest part for people who've not watched the fight is you got to watch when the cage announcer announces cameron's name the camera pans back to him and he just gives this oh wow yeah he did not like it <laughs> no i mean but like because uh, okay Knowing the business side of regional MMA, I was like, ooh, that'd be a good competition. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. If, to give to give a little insight, I think I sold about like $22,000 worth of tickets. Oh, wow. Nice. That's, 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 yeah. a, that's, 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 that's a nice day at the office. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, and that's just the way my dad's seen it. Ever since I was 17, I've been selling – that much since I was a kid. I mean, I have a lot of friends and, you know, from high school and, you know, my U of H friends and my fraternity and stuff. Um, but a lot of it's sponsors that really, you know, help and take care of everything. But the way my dad thought is that, like, if you're going to get a percentage of stuff that you sell, we might as well sell as much as we can to get you as much, as much money as possible. I said, sounds good to me. <laughs> He's I, like, I, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've done play by play for like regional shows. And then when you're, um, I remember one that we were doing, um, the fires had to turn their money in on weigh in day of all the tickets yeah. they sold. And I saw this one dude, he, I mean, like it wasn't like a regular mailing envelope. It was like a FedEx envelope, just full of cash. And, um, one, one of my guys I was there with me, he just looked at me, he goes, he's like, man, he goes, I don't know what his commission cut is. He goes, I'm telling you homeboys get a good payday. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, that's the same, like, so, 
you know, my dad pre-sells all the tickets in advance. Mm -hmm. So like when you turn in money, like when they turn in money on weigh-in days, I don't even have to show up because I already, I've already paid like two months ago. Yeah. You know, so it's, um, and it's another thing that I really appreciate my dad for doing too, because a lot of people are worried about selling tickets and stuff like the way, like the, the week of, you know, and my dad's like, I don't want you to worry about all that. You got enough to worry about. Yeah. You worry about your training and your school. I'll take care of all the rest. I'll take care of your tickets and this, you know, and it helps, you know, especially on wake up week. You're so worried about cutting the weight. You were to make sure you're healthy and you're good and you just want everything to be perfect. And then you got people texting you, you know, like, do you have tickets still? It's like, you could have got them three weeks ago, you know? <laughs> so it, it, it helps. It helps a lot, you know? Um, the less things you just have to worry about, it uh, makes it easier to just be able to just go in there and just fight and have fun. So make weight. With it, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of your dad, uh, was, he, was he at all critical of your performance? Oh, no, dude. He was so happy. <laughs> he was happy. I mean, of course, of course, as soon as the fight ended, I, you know, I went back to his house and as, he was already there when I got there and he was already watching the fight. He watched it like three times. He's like, here, sit down. Let's watch it. I was like, can we not celebrate this a little bit? I was like, all right, we can watch it. And, but, and he was really watching it, not to be critical, but really just to be like, I'm proud of you, you know, and mm -hmm. like, I'm really, really proud of you. And, um, and he didn't even talk about what I could have done better, you know. It's just really just like watching it, and just like, you know, everything we've been practicing, you know, all like the the one on one training. I, you know, I'd have people come to my dad's house, and we have like a little backyard area, and I get one on one training, kind of like picking, you know, what shots. And he's just like, you know, just proud of you know the work that I put in for fighting and school, you know, because he knows it's hard, you know, it's not easy. So, um, yeah, he wasn't too critical. He'll probably be critical when I get home. After three days, it's been three days, so he's probably you know time to get back to work. You got to fix this, this, and this. Okay. He did say head movement. He said I need to head, move my head more. That is one thing he did say, which I agree. I should not be getting hit, but it's okay. Is that one of those things that, like, when you go back and, and you look at at the fight? I, I mean, obviously, you can look at the pros of you know what you did well. Like, hey, you know, forward pressure was something we we you know we went on this camp, we did that. But it, it for you, it's more about kind of just like those. Like, cause I, I, like, I come from a football world. We call football game inventions, and I feel like MMA is yeah. the same type of way. I mean, you know, sure. punch, punch, can, punch can be an inch off, and it's a glancing shot. Or if it's an inch uh, other way, it's potentially a fight ending shot. I, is that when you're looking at the fight? It's more of like these, like very small, minute things that a lot of people just don't know. But it's like that's the stuff that potentially eats at you. You know, when you when you go back and watch the fight. Yeah, I think um, fights for me really help me pick out what I that I'm not very strong at. You know, mm -hmm. like in practice, sometimes it's hard to get a read of like what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right. Because you know, depending on who you go with, you can kind of just, yeah. you know, like if someone's hitting you, you just take them down and wrestle them, and then you win the round. Yeah. You know, but you don't really like know why he's hitting you or like why this and this is happening in practice. So like when I watch my fights, I go back and I kind of get a sense of what I'm doing wrong. You know, and then the things that I do wrong in my fights, I go back to training and fix the things I was doing wrong in my fights. You know, so like I was getting hit a little bit too much. I wasn't really moving my head the right way or like instead of really moving my head, like my feet weren't in the right spots to be able to slip mm -hmm. and be off. You know, um, so that's kind of how I use my fights and how I like to watch them. Kind of just see what I'm doing wrong, because at the end of the day, like when you're fighting there, you, you have you forget, you know, yeah. stuff kind of goes all out the um through the roof you know you kind of just forget you just kind of go in there and brawl so i like watching my fights and just proud of you know ex like executing you know the game plan like you said our game plan was a forward pressure and that's what i did and i was i'm proud of um you know i like to and I also like i like to see what i do good too mm -hmm. and keep getting better at what i do and be great at it you know like my forward pressure it was it was really good, but now let's be great and trying to cut off angles and put them on the fence like I did in the first round, you know? So it, it goes both ways. It goes both ways for sure. Of course, uh, congratulations on the victory. As always, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Of course, uh, let me know that you can find you on social media. And of course, those sponsors that have been helping you out for this one. On Instagram, uh, my handle is underscore Michael Aswell MMA. Uh, all my sponsors, I mean, really, I want to shout out my family. 
my dad, you know, is always the biggest. My dad and mom, my biggest sponsor since I was a kid. You know, uh, my I know my uncle always takes care of me. I mean, there's there's a lot of sponsors to shout out. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess MMA, I can go to Michael Aswell MMA, and then uh, I'll shout out my sponsors on there too.